Hi, I'm Vicki with Condi Technical Support and today I'm going to talk about the differences of tile and how and when you would use a green heat conductive rubber pad. Okay, so you, we do some tile with the heat conductive rubber pad and we do some tile without it. I'm not here to talk about the temperature or, or the instructions about time, temperature and, and uh, versus one size versus another. All I want to accomplish in this video is to know the difference on how to press the tile, meaning the layers, including your felt, your tile, your heat conductive rubber pad, uh, or no heat conductive rubber pad. So uh, we're not going to get into anything else, but I do want to show you, get an up close, a tight shot of when and how the tile looks on the back, which will help determine when you use a heat conductive rubber pad for uh, transferring onto tile. So let's get started on that. All right, so what I want to establish here with these sample tiles is um, the raised areas on the back of the tile. So when you're using the heat conductive pad, you should look for, on the back of the tile, you should be looking for areas that are raised. And what I mean by raised, meaning this particular tile uh, has lines in it, and this square center here where the lines look like speed bumps, so they're, they're higher. Uh, so what's going to happen if you don't get e equal distribution of heat is when you turn the tile over you're going to see a, like a checkerboard. So using the heat conductive rubber pad is important because it will help distribute the heat better with the padding versus without it and that's what you want to accomplish. This 12 inch tile here now, this, what I, why I brought this one out is that it can be deceiving, and that is that it looks like you could go without the heat conductive rubber pad. However, and that's because the reason I say that is that these checkered uh, squares back here, these diamond looking shapes, if you rub your hand across it, the texture of it, it's, it's quite flat. It's, it's just slightly textured. It's not raised as high as this, but there's a slight raise to this uh, diamond shaped checkerboard. Now what's deceiving about this tile is around the edge this is a higher raised area where the square is that goes around all the way around the edge of the uh, 12 inch tile. So you want to look for things like that as well. Now um, if, you, if you press these tiles without using the conductive pad then what you're going to get is is light and dark places, uh, you're going to get lines, it's not going to be equally distributed, your image is going to have, um, it's going to look light and dark, it's going to look like a checkerboard probably on this one. You might get lucky and it not happen, but it's better to be consistently uh, perfect when you press these tiles if you can, rather than take chances on uh, not using the pad. So this pad is important to purchase should you be pressing multiple types of tiles. Now don't assume always that they're always going to look the same on the back because our, the vendor does change the way the back of the tile looks. But what's important is that you learn the difference to when, as to when to use the heat conductive pad and when not to. And so I'm trying to demonstrate that in this video. So as with every uh, tile, you're always going to use the felt pad. But uh, with particular tiles like these, with many more that I haven't sampled here, but uh, these particular tiles, you, it will require a pad. So make sure you have one. And then we're going to talk about uh, the felt, and I'm going to show you some samples of that as well. All right, so these are some samples of tile that's not required to use a heat conductive rubber pad. And I'm going to say again that uh, the backs are not always the same, but the main thing you want to look for is um, the smaller uh, are the less textured areas on the back, meaning not looking like an empty square here or the speed bumps as I had demonstrated with the heat conductive pad. But what you want to look for is that there's not much raised area from the back of the tile being flat versus this honeycomb effect. And the honeycomb effect, most of these tiles, and most I, I'm going to go ahead and say all of these tiles with the honeycomb back, uh, can be pressed without the heat conductive rubber pad. And then um, some of the deco tiles as well. This tile here has the small lines 
little grid lines that come across uh, horizontally. And so uh, it does have a square in the back. However, the difference between the ones that you press with the heat conductive rubber pad that has the square, it's not as it's not as high. These lines are not as they're not a, they're not as high as the other ones. Um, so these lines are not raised up as high as the other ones, should I say. So basically it's more flat. So you don't feel as much of a bump here when you run your hand across it. So you can use this type of uh, tile as well with just the uh, felt pad and not the heat conductive pad. And there's some other ones also that are out there that we sell that uh, what you want to look for is the back of the tile not being as having as many raised areas and uh, that would be the difference. We've went over the backs of the tiles and when to use the heat conductive rubber pad, when not to, and what you should know about tile is make sure you always read the instruction from our webpage, from the uh, sublimation instructions. The, the sizes are different, the instructions, so the times are going to be different. And this video is not about telling you about time or temperature, but it's more about letting you know what layers you're going to need when you do press a variety of tiles. So we get the question often about the backs of the tiles and it's a little hard to describe so this video um, serves as a purpose to show you the difference in the raised areas and when to use the heat conductive rubber pad. So if you have any questions by all means always call us here at Condi before you proceed. We can answer your questions and get you on the right path before you press a bunch of tile for the, with using the wrong pad. So certainly give us a call. As always, thank you for your time. My name is Vicki.